recently I've seen published a phenomenal um, trial that I can only imagine took an extraordinary amount of work to, to perform. Um, when you were in the planning stages for the best CLA trial, how did you imagine sort of the, um, the outcome fitting into our, our overall understanding of how to care for patients with PAD? Yeah, thanks for that, that question, Claire. So, you know, just to set the stage a little bit, the, the best trial, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, was a, a randomized trial. It was funded by the National Institutes of Health, and it, it really looked at a subset of patients that were thought to be eligible for both treatments, both open surgery and, and, and the vascular therapy. And it was a question when I was in your shoes, maybe a few years out, I was well trained in both. I came out of fellowship, kind of fired up. I did a lot of endovascular therapy, and then started to to wonder if I was doing the right thing for my patients. They didn't seem to be getting the same degree of of kind of perfusion or or um, kind of firepower that you can get with a surgical bypass. So we we created this trial. We um, somehow at the poor thought to have a, a quality of life component and a cost effectiveness component. And so, you know, it, it really allowed me, but all the investigators that took part, and there was over a thousand across the world, to really put to the test uh, our own treatment biases. In the absence of data, and as you well know, there's, there's very little data to support the, the, the decisions that we've been talking about today, um, to put it to the test. and and to say, okay, I, I have this personal bias that surgical bypass is better. Let me test it in a really scientifically grounded way. The results uh, just came out. Uh, as I mentioned, they were published in the New England Journal um, electronically about a month ago and uh, presented at the American Heart Association. And in the first and largest cohort, and those are folks that had a good quality saphenous vein, so the best case scenario for bypass surgery, surgery was more effective. It was more effective at preventing amputations and preventing reinterventions. Um, there was a second smaller cohort in which uh, a good segment of saphenous vein was not available, and so you were using what we call disadvantaged conduit prosthetic bypass or arm vein. And in that case, uh, the results were very similar between open and endovascular in terms of the, the quality of life results, they were very interesting. They did not parallel the main clinical results. And so the main finding was that both, so, so the very first main finding of the quality of life analysis was that the quality of life in critical limb patients was extremely low, extremely poor. Both endovascular therapy and open surgery uh, dramatically increased the quality of life very early on, as early as three months. And it was sustained out to the four years that uh, we looked at patients. Uh, but there was no real difference between open surgery and endovascular therapy. So we got to dig into the data set a little bit more and try to figure out why that is. Um, but, but very interesting results. And hopefully that'll be a foundation that, you know, further studies on quality of life can build on and, you know, further studies in this uh, just general arena, arena can build on because that's just the first step to to really establishing a much bigger handle on, on are we doing the right thing in our decision-making. Mm 